In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. A very good morning to you all. And hawk-eyed amongst you will have noticed that I am clad in the fairest of red today. And so is our altar, which can mean only one thing. Well, it could mean one of two things. It could mean either it's the feast day of a martyr, which it isn't, or that the red represents the fire of the Holy Spirit. And today is Whitson, the feast of Pentecost when we remember the birthday of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, gathering them together as one people in Christ and sending them on their way out into the world to tell of his wonderful deeds and to share the joy of the gospel. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on the cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. As we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshment, fill us with your spirit. As we long to be renewed, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your spiritual gifts. Fill us with your spirit. As we long for power from on high. Fill us with your spirit. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. The Lord is here. 
His Spirit is with us. Let us pray that God's Holy Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, when Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do any of you know, I wonder, why today has its name, or indeed names? The first of those we heard in our passage from Acts today, the day of Pentecost. Pentecost actually meaning the 50th day. 50th day since the Passover, therefore separate Jewish festival. It's one, one way in which we refer to today. Do you know why it's called Whit Sunday? Um, I mean, it was, um, there are various explanations which people have given. Some say uh, it's because the church was done up in white, um, although, as you can see, traditionally the church is done up in red, um, and it's not red Um but uh, another theory is that on Whitson we give thanks for <coughs> we give thanks for the Holy Spirit, who is the wisdom of God. In Old English, the wit of God. Um, and so today marks the Spirit, the wisdom of God. It's one of those. Um, one of those parallel expressions which you, you, you find in Scripture when, when people talk about wisdom and they're referring to the Holy Spirit. And I think that in itself is instructive, isn't it? Because the Holy Spirit always seems to be one of those aspects of our faith, certainly the person of God, that we feel obliged to talk about kind of sideways. Um, that we find it difficult to get a grip on. We can picture Jesus. That's precisely the, you know, the, the reality of, of, of the Son of God, of the incarnate Saviour of God made flesh, that he's, he's visible and tangible and knowable. Although we can't imagine the Father, we can use that name to identify God with fathers that we have known, with, with parental responsibility, with par parental love, with parental judgment, with, with all of those things that, that go along with those qualities. The Holy Spirit, though, is inherently intangible, as intangible as a spirit, as intangible as the wind. 
And as a consequence, we find language difficult when talking about the Holy Spirit, because so much of what we want to express is, is, is wordless, it can't be put down. Today, as we celebrate the gift of God's Holy Spirit to the disciples, it makes sense to contemplate what that Spirit means, both then and now for us. And I think the point that I want to make is that it's really the fact that we can't get a grip on the Holy Spirit, the fact that we can't pin the Spirit down, which is the most significant thing, this aspect of our belief. Because you see, the more that you think you know your faith, the more that you think that you're all over the details, that you've got the rules absolutely nailed down, that you know exactly what to do in the ritual, that you feel like, yep, this being a Christian thing, I've got it cracked. That's when you know you're in trouble. And the Holy Spirit is our reminder of that. Because the Holy Spirit reminds us that God is not pinned down. God is not constrained. God is not circumscribed. God has no boundaries. God will not be told what to do. Not by you, not by me, not by anyone. God is a free spirit. The spirit blows where it wills, says Jesus to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And this, this is profoundly important. Because this, this, this tells us that the faith in which we share is not something that can solely be learnt it's not a series of lessons that we have to take on board and store away. It's not even just contained in, in the stories that we hear and share about the life of Christ, though God knows those are valuable and important. But the faith that we share is about our relationship, our connection with God through the gift of the Holy Spirit that we have received. In the world today, people talk about themselves. They say, I'm not religious, they say, but I am spiritual. And in a sense, that's, that, that's kind of reaching for the same kind of idea. You know, they, they know instinctively that the, the rites and ceremonies and words of religion are not solely where it's at. That what they want is some truth which is beyond that, which is beyond those words, which extends deep, deep down into the recesses of our being. We all want that. We know we want that. That echoes in our heads. We want to be fulfilled. We want to be made whole. We want to be doing being a human being properly. And that's the business of the Holy Spirit. And that only comes through relationship, through connection, through opening ourselves up to the unknown and the unknowable and allowing ourselves to be transformed, allowing God's Holy Spirit to dwell within, within us. The words that are used in Scripture that we translate as spirit are ruach in, 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 in Hebrew, and animos in Greek, both of which mean, 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 mean breath and wind, as unpredictable as the wind and yet as powerful and as awesome. As life-giving as breath and as most, and, 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 and as intimately a part of us and our being, that thing which enables us not just to live but to express ourselves, to make things known, to project ourselves beyond ourselves, to communicate anything, to be in relationship. God makes himself present to the disciples at Pentecost, at Whitson. And by the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
He connects himself to them, as he connected himself to us at our baptisms. And by connecting them together, by uniting them in Jesus Christ, he changes them from a disparate group of followers who believed things and had heard things into an active, engaged group of people who went out into the world and did things and changed things and altered the course of history and lifted people's eyes beyond this world up to heaven. This is what we should pray for today. This is what we should invite today. And that's a scary thing to do because it's inviting the unknown. It's inviting the uncertain. It's saying to God, thy will be done. Do what you will with my life. Blow me where you want me to go because I'm sitting bobbing here on a sea waiting to be driven by your breath, by your wind, waiting to be filled with your life and carried off to some place I know not where. That's the nature of the relationship that we have with God. And we trust because we know that that breath, that wind, is pure love. It's inspired by everything in the story that came before this. Sacrificial, self-emptying love that comes direct from our Father through his Son, Jesus Christ and is expressed in us and for us in our lives by the gift of God's Holy Spirit. Come down, O love divine. Let us pray that God may fill us with his Spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit and we ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the gift of your wisdom. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Spirit. Thank you for your peace. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. We thank you for your healing. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. Lord, Come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruits we receive from you. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. We thank you for your breath, given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Please be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and to praise him. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth, and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells, to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Nicholas, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us draw near to Christ in our hearts. Let us come to him not because we must, but because we may. Not because we're strong, but because we're weak. Let us come not because any goodness of our own gives us the right, but because we need mercy and help. Let us come because we love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Let us come because he has loved us. And has given himself for us. Let us come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body, and it is he who invites us. Body of Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. With Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. Strong and weak, women and men tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Felix, can I invite you to come forward and to take this candle on behalf of everybody at home? For 50 days, we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we've prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in St Nicholas, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? With the power of God, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Today, we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples, and we invite that same spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the Spirit, who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us, make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the Spirit, who set the Church on fire upon the day of Pentecost, bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, Go in the light and the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.